Um, well, yeah, we, um, we opened in uh, so um, a cool. year and a half ago, in July, uh, and um, uh, we chose a uh, standalone store just so that there was somewhere where all the perfumes were available to the public. Um, because at the time a lot of perfumes were only available online and it's not the greatest way to smell perfume is that online so um, this space sort of gave people the opportunity to at least travel somewhere. Um, it's also an, a space that they wanted um, for us to showcase the brand um, in terms of the artwork that's involved, whether that's uh, collaborations with the Puma, um, the art and the and by Alexander Tucker, So yeah, it was, it was set up to kind of have the space that they don't have in large stores to, uh, to show the collaboration between art and, 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 and showcase perfume itself as an art form. Because Korea Perfumes used to do like little events when they released them, didn't they? Yeah. But they yeah. never had a store for just perfumes before. No, I mean, when we've um, had volume launches, where we've had like say, 10 perfumes released at a time, they have done a small shop for a short time, usually only for a week or so. Mm. Um, so this is the first permanent store, and the only for a perfume store at the moment. Um, yeah. Okay, um, so that leads me to my next question. Um, what do you feel the store offers people that are normal left store doesn't? I think it's a very different atmosphere here. Um, it gives people the opportunity to, um, to explore the perfumes without the interruption of um, other scents. In a large store, there's um, always the background of scents, which you know, some customers find that it, it can change the way they feel about the scent. So here is like a, almost like a black canvas to, uh, to really get to know everything. And because we're in such a, a nice, quiet little street. It's, um, it gives people the opportunity to really get to know the perfume. I think it's more like a personal place as well. You can really relax and get kind of into the feeling you want from the perfume. Yeah. I love the stores, but if I'm in one, I always have it too excited and too rushed around, I was kind of dying from shells, yeah. I can't really concentrate, whereas I like to have time with perfumes. I think perfumes are a tricky, <coughs> a tricky thing to, to explore because it's invisible, so it, it, can only be, it can only be explored when there's no introduction, so um, um, a nice quiet space like this really helps the perfumes come alive. Okay, so how long have you been a part of the store and what did you do before? So, um, well, starting with me, I've, um, I've worked for Lush since 2006, so about nine years. So I've worked in all kind of many different areas of the company, um, many different stores around London. Um, um, I've also worked as part of the international team, um, seeing how the other markets are doing. Um, that's what I did just before um, being part of this problem here. Um, for me, um, as you said, like, the perfume is such a massive part of my love for, the, the, for Lush. I love Lush. Perfumes are, are what I'm going to do most. Uh, so to specialise and be surrounded by them is like my idea. Um, yeah. um, each one of them feel like a family member. All I want is for you guys to offer perfume making classes. And that would be nice. I know, I'd love to do that. Well, you need to go teach them this week. That's something we could always look into. Yeah, we could always look into this as a, a project for the future. Yeah. That's one thing since blogging that I find would want to do as a lesson. It's something that I would like to do as well. We, actually, we need to make I've this never, happen. I've never actually had the opportunity to do what changes in the store scene since it was first opened? I think uh, since, it's, since it's first opened, it's been, uh, there's been many things that actually have remained the same. Like the core team here has been the same. 
um, which has really helped to keep the <laughs> level of service consistent and the, the experience of the customers consistent. Um, um, the things that have changed, we've had like some limited edition products in the last year. We've uh, had 2543 for our birthday and we've had a product again now for And Toka Toka has made a surprise comeback, surprise to us. <laughs> we only found out about that last week, so things happen very quickly within Lush and, and especially Gorilla. Like, How do you feel about that? Because a lot of people get quite annoyed when stuff like that happens. I personally love it. Like I just planned a whole holiday pool to get 29 Five Street yeah. and I could have got it on the kitchen but I loved going there. I think yeah. having something special like that really appeals to me. I think that's the difference with like people who really know the brand really well. They understand maybe a little bit more about how things work behind the scenes. And products can sometimes be developed and created in, in days with the uh, launch of Oxford Street. Many of those products were very were, were still being brought up and, and made up shortly before the store opened, right? which, which is incredible when you think of other companies. It can take years for a product um, conception through to being available to the public happens that can take a, a, a year long process so mm. it means for us things can happen spontaneously i love that but um yeah, i understand that um, some people would like more information or warning uh, i guess it's more complicated when you're not from england i think that's probably where you get yeah. more annoyed because it's even harder then but if it means i have to wait so i can plan a trip somewhere i'm quite happy because it makes a whole event for me yeah <laughs> and i do like doing that for me, the, the excitement of just something, something suddenly being available. Yeah, it's a little treat. It's cool. Um, I, I love that aspect. And I think that's why the kitchen works so well. Is yeah. People don't know months in advance what's going to happen. They, they know each week. Mm. My friend always surprise. laughs at me because a lot of people get annoyed with the kitchen. And I'm just like, it's crashing again. It's all a part of the excitement. It's fun. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I guess it's good. I, everyone goes on at the same time. Yeah, and then, and then, and then you know that can sometimes cause problems, um, but it's just the demand for such mm -hmm. products. But it makes you feel a part of something, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, what inspired the events that the store holds, such as the scented song and the chocolate pairing? Well, they both come. Um, they both both those things kind of have their roots in previous um, previous stores, like previous pop ups we've done. Um, We've had chocolate tasting in the Edinburgh pop-up shop um, and we collaborate with Edward and Irwin Chocolatiers in Edinburgh, so that's how we form our relationship. I just got to try the chocolate, it was lovely. Did you like it? Yeah. There you go. Which one did you try? All six and I couldn't eat them all, so I brought like half of each one to take home with me. <laughs> they, are, they are so great at um, researching the perfumes and understanding. I think stuff like that just goes to show that stuff like perfume and chocolate and anything where you're creating stuff is an art. A lot of yeah. people won't say it is, but I think that just proves it because it's all to do with your emotions as well. Yeah, and they all kind of, all of your senses um, kind of mix, mm -hmm. um, which kind of goes along with that whole synesthesia <laughs> aspect of oh. the spa. No, it was yummy. Um, that one emotion can can trigger something that maybe mm. sort of can, can trigger. I think this is why I like Clutch so much as well because I kind of did, like, discovered it at a time when I was pregnant and I had all my emotions coming back to my anxiety because that's where my emotions come from, my first child. So my second one, I was happy to be pregnant but I had a miscarriage and a traumatic first birth so I was terrified and everything about Lush kind of made me think about how I feel more and I settled myself down and I found ways to cope with stuff and now I find that I will find comfort with some different smells that have kind of got me through that. And I just think I that do. it when makes you more aware of yourself, oh, that's probably it. why I've lived it yeah. so much. And I think perfume can be quite, can be prescriptive like that. You can use it as a tool to, to help your emotional state. Yeah. And, and isn't that, um, is it sun that was actually created to treat the sad? And yeah. I think I must suffer that because as soon as it gets to winter, I'm just like, I'm going to hibernate and I'm not leaving. And then the rest of the year, I can be like, really like yeah. annoyingly hyper. Yeah, it can affect some people like very, very strongly um, with the lack of sunlight. So just having those scents that do remind you of the happy times, like, yeah. it makes a massive difference. I also find cinnamon really relaxing as well, yeah. or 
Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's not yeah. even a sufficient yeah. property, but if you have built up a relationship with that perfume and it reminds you of a special time, that's just as powerful as, yeah. a, as an essential oil. Yeah. I think what's so nice as well is that yeah. the stories that go along yeah. with perfumes sometimes yeah. add to that. Like with furs, you know, fur, the gorse has a strong history of being used for comfort and protection. So, like many years ago, when people still swept their houses out with their sort of twig branch brush. So yeah, I think yeah, it's nice that they kind of they brought back some of those um, mm. old beliefs about about certain oils and certain plants back into the perfume. And everyone who ever smells first mm. says what a comfort it is to yeah. them, which I think is it's quite no, it, yeah. it is. It's a it's it's a perfume hug. What got you interested in perfume? Um, yeah. For me, it's kind um, of like, so like you just saying, it. it's, for me, it's almost um, like a form of therapy. Yeah. So, for this one. I find that there's very little can change my my way of thinking, like, like I said, it can. Um, and for that reason, I have probably hundreds of perfumes at home um, that I can wear depending on the mood, depending what I come and eat that day. So if you need a confidence perfume, then you know, it's nice to have a go-to and the same for if you um, need more energy or yeah, or sometimes you just need to be really grounded. So. Yes. Yeah, for me, I, um, a perfume has always been that, that, that kind of therapeutic tool rather than a fashion statement. Did your perfume interest start with general perfumes or yeah. perfumes? Um, well, I've always had a habit of just smelling random objects. Yes. So as a kid, I was addicted to sort of smelling paper. Love the the way that paper can so I'm a can paper vary. Crafter and I love the smell. Hey. Yeah. I like the store, you yeah. will get my weird smell thing. <laughs> <laughs> And one thing that was always special to me was when I read a novel, over time, um, that when I go back to that novel and you flick through the pages, sometimes you can almost be back reading the novel again, just from the scent of that. Like, uh, we covered the sort of chocolate thing, but we didn't cover the scent of songs. Ah, true. Which is quite important. So that's something that we do like every two weeks here. Oh, you doing it? Really ready, yeah, yeah, the scented songs is every two weeks. Mm -hmm. We're having a Christmas break at the moment for a week. I really like because when I first came to the store, it was your birthday, and I was really yeah, sad were. that I, I couldn't make it for her. I came the day before, so I quickly got to the day after on your YouTube, and she was so good, and I was so good. Yeah, she was amazing. Um, yeah, the, the reason we started doing scented songs in the previous um, pop ups and galleries we've had. Um, We've had scented events like the scented cinemas mm. because it's quite a small location. We wanted to have uh, what else we could show here. Um, and I really love the idea of um, featuring music more. It's, it's a big aspect of this store anyway with the, the kind of music booth and the vinyls that we play. So, um, yeah, I really wanted to um, bring a kind of live aspect to the store. So, I asked one of my friends if she would play an acoustic set here. And that kind of get, got the ball rolling. It wasn't really meant to be a regular thing, but um, it's turned into. We've had so much good feedback, and so many people who have heard from their friends about it that we constantly have somebody to play. It's interesting because I find that, like for me personally, music and, and perfume have always been really similar because they both access for me the same part of my memory, my brain. Um, sometimes you can see something and it will remind you of, of a time or an event, but when you smell something, it doesn't just remind you, it transports you, you are physically there. What is your favourite grill of perfume? And favourite story behind it? Um, oh, there's so many. Um, there's so many I've loved over the years. And, um, it is really hard to, uh, to just. Because I have so many perfumes I love, it's hard to just say there's one for me. At the moment, there is one because we don't have it anymore, and always with rose tinted specs, you. You make it. Uh, I'm to to That's the thing. Yeah. Okay, you 
But yeah, I can't for me, which is one that I didn't get on with at first. I really didn't. Everyone demanded it comes back, so now I want it. Well, I heard a lot about it, and when I first smelled it five years ago, I, I was really disappointed because I wanted it to be something it wasn't. What's it meant to smell like? Um, well, the notes that are in it kind of don't seem to go with how it smells to me. So I read, this, you know, it's got bergamot in there, so it's got this real uplifting element. But it's also really deep because it's got myrrh. Um, so I was expecting something dark, sticky, with this brightness coming through. But when I first smelt it, I just found it very, very woody, very dry. Is it kind of similar to like the God Um Not really. For me, the most similar smell is is Presence Hat. But Presence Hat for me is very base level. Every all the all the levels of it stay low. All the ingredients are very grounded. Very which is similar to Icon, but then Icon has these sharp, um, uplifting moments um, from the vocal art. Um, so it is quite unique. It's, uh, yeah, at the moment that's what I crave. Do you want to name any more? So, what I do like to wear instead is Preston's hat because I do like the deep, sticky, resinous perfume. Old Delhi Station is one of my favourites, especially this time because it's so Christmassy and so festive. Um, and um, staying alive, I've actually been getting one too. It's just for me the most warming Christmas winter fragrance. Um, in the summer, I think I prefer something fresher and a little bit lighter, but in the winter, I want as much depth and stickiness. And that's what I I'd love for it to be like a Cinder's perfume. So, that would just be, yeah. we need to put a few petitions in, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so Hashtag classes. more cinnamon. Yeah. <laughs> perfume all classes cinnamon. and more cinnamon. Yeah. It's all about people ready to go. We'll start here with this. Just see what I can Yeah, what's your favourite story? My favourite story. I do love the story of the President's Hat. I love the fact that it's based on art so and literature. Um, and it's, it just really touches. Uh, personally for me, like the connection between literature and art and uh, sense. Um, so, I love that story, but I actually think one of my favourite stories is Princess Cotton Grass. Oh, um, it's meant to be an old mention. Yeah, it's a, it's a Swedish fairy tale. Um, and it's quite a simple fairy tale, but what I like about it is the way that, for me, it's connected with um, the reasons why uh, Simon created it. The story was of a, a princess in a tower in a, a dock pine forest and um, she really wanted to go on a journey and she meets an elf um, and obviously the, uh, the elk is going on, on his own own way and she wants to join him, she wants to share her heart with the world and Hello. share everything she's got to give. Eventually good. after amazing. lots of uh, refusals, he lets, her, he lets her join like, him and um, she, um, she comes across a lake and she looks into the lake and as she's glancing in, she, her locket falls and disappears into the dark. Like, and she spends forever more looking for her heart for her locket, for everything she's got to give really is the world. But um, for me, the reason I love it is because I see it as like a cautionary tale. Don't don't dwell too long on the, the sad things that happened in life, um, because otherwise you won't get on with your journey. Your journey's still out there. Kind of about missing out on opportunities. Yeah. Well. It's, it's, and it's quite easy when tragedy hits to get caught up in it. And, um, but you don't do it anymore? Or? Yeah, just not, not move on. I think that's kind of like a, a story through Lush as a whole. And it's because my blog is a new blog, but I tend to blog Lush mostly. And the reason I started it was because I wanted oh, we do have something to keep me positive. Because mm -hmm. I'm quite a positive person, but obviously everyone has their downsides. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think it's quite important to kind of push yourself positive to pull you through. 
Yeah, so that is quite well, so you have to grasp onto them because, you. like you say, they are the Take things care. that you through yeah. without them. Short, you short, you oh. will waste a lot of time. Yeah. Um, so for me, it, yeah. it, it's oh, just I love the connection yeah. with with what was happening with the the ring Mark and Simon at the time. Oh, they were going through some periods so of loss, and the cotton flower just kept cropping up. And I think Simon opened a bucket of flowers, and the cotton flower was just open on that page. And he knew it was a sign. So for me, the sign, the sign was to, to keep moving, to carry on, not dwell too long in that belief. Um, so I think the same symbolism was in that story. Um, yeah. And I love people see it's a very sad story. How are you? It's a very story. Because you can learn a lot from it. And it's about, you know, don't forget oh, yeah. what, what you yeah. meant, where your journey was going. Oh, I think that's okay. I love that. I tell how much yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, so, yes, uh, I'm still pretty new to Lush, and she's so going to ask Chris today. So, can we tell your free fragrances that you yeah. were still available that no longer are and describe them? Okay, um, so yeah, there's um, Icon, which I kind of touched on a little bit, but for me it's just, it's really dark, it's really classy, um, but it has these sharp, little cheeky notes of bergamot to keep you uplifted so I'm, I'm someone who likes to kind of stay grounded I like to feel safe and grounded so Icon does that for me but like you said you have to look for those positives in life and the bergamot for me is um, is those little moments so rather than just staying all base level Icon provides me with these little sparks to remind me that that there are some amazing things happening in life. Um, and then Lady Boy was probably another perfume that I wish we still had. Um, it was the first perfume I ever bought from Lush. Well, it was part of it was being ever too busy to go to the store, which was just make up on fragrance. Um, that was in their original range when they first opened and um, I fell in love with that fragrance. So it's, uh, it's incredible. Like, a lot of people see it as just quite sweet fragrance, but actually there's so many unique ingredients in it. It's full of um, seaweed and violet and uh, chamomile, oak moss. So there's some really deep, beautiful ingredients and it has this like sweet almost banana like top note um, it's a real contrast it starts off fun it's like a carnival but then once it's on your skin um, it, it just goes apart of you the sweetness dies down and it becomes warm it's like a hug. yeah it's like a banana scented hug <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and then I guess it's the third one that they can talk to. But I could go with a few actually. Yeah. There was one in Vienna that um, wasn't around for long called Om. Um, I don't think many people know it. But it's very spicy and it had this sharp, very citrus lemon element to it. Um, very juicy. Um, and yes. it, was, it was very spicy, almost borderline cooking spicy. It, but it had this fresh citrus element to the spice. So, like an amazing like, Indian dessert, is how I saw it. Um, so I would, I would love to have all of that, but I'm aware that it wasn't the most popular, so um, yeah, But I love unusual fragrances, you see, so that's why I love Gorillas. There are so many perfumes you'd never find on the high street ever. Um, so Ladyboy Icon and Arm, it's awesome. What is your favourite part of your job and what else does it involve that we might not know about? Um, oh, so the main favourite part of my job is being surrounded by perfume, being able to, to try a hundred perfumes on a day, um, just being lost in that world, um, 
us. But also like working with the people we work with. That's that's the other positive thing about working with Still Weave, such a great team. Everyone's really close. Um, so those are the two best elements. Also I love the fact that we um, we have quite creative input in the store, so we have scented songs, chocolate tasting, um, and we set up our own so, events and we even prepare our own perfume, the perfumes with our own records as well. So I like, think we have some of the records we've chosen. So I've chosen this month fixes to go with both. They, they complement each other crazy, like really, really well. Um, yeah, so I think it's that mix of the, the warmth of the, the family environment and working. I don't know if it's just like the type of people that go for the job. Whenever I've met people that work at lunch, they've always got quite warm personalities, and I've never met a lunch. Person I haven't liked. I've always yeah. like I've always had like connections where I know you know what to talk about and you don't have to worry for a little bit weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, totally. I think everyone has a little bit. And they're always so passionate about their jobs, and that's what you want people that actually love them, and it's not just buy this because I'm like, you can tell how much we really love what they're selling. Well, I think that's why a lot of people enjoy working for that reason because they they love being surrounded by the things they love. Yeah. And not only that, but the things they believe. And they share that with their colleagues. Yeah, I think it's a really important part. I think it shows good management as well because by doing that and by involving your staff, you make them feel a part of it, which makes them want to work harder. So it works out well for everyone. And I think um, something that I guess maybe a lot of people might not know is that um, this, this store is also a bit of a training ground as well. So we have staff from other stores come to work here to get a real understanding of the the I think uh, Martin from Lush yes. Hampton came down. Yeah, yeah, Martin's been here a couple of times. I think I knew about all the benefits. Martin's lovely. Yeah, he's been down a couple of times to help us out. And he's a real asset you know, to, um, to the company in general. But having him here is amazing. We have lovely staff in our family too. They've always so welcome. And like I said, when I first discovered Lush, I was in a great place. So they were really nice and they'd always recommend so good help and as well as all going through all the pregnancy and all the gross stuff that <laughs> <laughs> so it was really nice to get to know people. Yeah. Like, and that's also another positive yeah. about yeah. working here is uh, getting to meet loads of people because we've always got new people uh, working here from around the Today we've got uh, Mish from Derby as well, yeah. who's just again one of the most awesome uh, uh, perfume, blushy people. Okay, well, uh, finally, uh, uh, you can see uh, you are working with the Festival and on yeah. Centre yeah. Cinema with Blush, Oxford Street. So it might be more of the same, really. We um, the chocolate thing is so um, so popular. It was amazing, um, and it's something that works really well. Music, I think, is again something we would like to expand on, like as a team. Um, we would love, I think, personally, and I know the rest of the team would love to have like an all day. Scented Songs Festival. Yeah. That, that was there a Lush Fest? Yeah, we've done a few. Yeah, we've had a few Lush Fests. I think there's been three, at least three Lush Fests now. Um, so if they do want to get, I think we could perhaps get Gorilla to do um, yeah, scented scented songs for the whole time. Yeah, and I think as far as like events go, we're, we're always up for we're kind of up for anything really. As long as it's relevant, as long as um, it suits our ethics, we're up for most things. We sometimes also do like scenting for art installations and art events. We've done um, some of our friends have done an um, art exhibition here around Shoreditch and we've Use some of that yes. to help bring them alive. Yeah. So definitely more of that in the, in the future. Yeah. Well. I really liked the uh, Gorilla Gallery in the Shopsy Street. So I look forward to what that will be next. Yeah, so. yeah they'll, they'll um, I think after the cinema, they'll, they'll be a fresh new. Yeah, yeah. Be cool. I, can't, I couldn't even make up my favourite one. My son was obsessed, obsessed with the Staying Alive. Yeah. So he was just in there for the whole thing. Going. Yeah. 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 
already a bit strange. I've got some blush already. That's a healthy obsession. It is a good obsession. As long as he stays away from mine, he's not that fine. The thing you have to buy him is only like 100 mils. No, he does. He has his own stuff. Or he'll go into stores now and just like grab members and be like, I do have one more. If not, it is. I just want to ask you about because I my blog is mostly beauty, but I do like I said, I do do much because I'm a business. But it's very, it's quite feminine, and I don't mean it to be just for girls. But I guess the way you set up talking about like that intensity. But I have found a lot of men coming to me when I talk about Perkins. So I want to ask you. About, and, uh, I always consider gorilla to be unisex. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's something that like, we try to make really clear to us a lot with shop and gorilla is that yeah. everything um, is unisex. Yeah. There are definitely perfumes that are classically more feminine, historically speaking, like florals yeah. and things that people might see as. Now, it's, it's my, but like it's my taste these days have changed anyway. Um, men's fragrances have got so much sweeter. Yeah, I think it's more personal. Exactly. And we don't want to stop anyone from wearing this and they enjoy because for me it's about, it's about what helps you. So if it's a family fragrance, then you'll die, but it makes you feel good. And I think men, because I get a lot of men come and they'll message me about Lush and they'd like this, but is it too girly? And I'm like, no. Loads of men message me about Snow Fairy. He loves Snow Fairy. I'm like, just because it's called Snow Fairy doesn't mean that you can't use it. And it's just like... Even when you have things like it's like on my skin, um, it goes spicy, it goes warm, it's real interesting. Sense comes through, and um, yeah, I, I wear Sikkim Girls. The name to me suggests that you're just rather than the power of the oil. Yeah, I think in a way it could be more for like men anyway, because it's about temptation. So it's kind of but yeah, I don't think there's many I'd say not to try it. And so I'm always happy to talk to men. I just, I just find it really interesting that they message me like it's a secret they shouldn't tell people. And I think but that's, um, that's a cultural. Yeah, like society has kind of said for years that everything has to be segregated and that's what makes you a woman and that's what makes you a man. And uh, I think we're kind of coming to realise now that it's not being, being yourself um, is, the only, is the only way to be yourself. And I think that's another thing about Lush though, they don't tell you who to be, they just let part of you, you know. I think in the first world it is tricky though because there is still a very much uh, um, uh, a strong um, old school kind of way of thinking that's still, that's still going on now where I've, I've shopped in some very high, high end stores and they've told me that certain perfumes I've liked I couldn't have because they are women's and also I was with um, a female friend of mine and she likes really deep dark and was dirty woody faces and she was told that it wouldn't work on her skin, she had to get the female version. Um, despite the fact that she tried them both and the male one is what did it for her. And that's all that's in it. It isn't about what anybody else thinks. Our female is personal. Exactly. I agree. Again, another good reason. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much. No, thank you. It's been fun. I did enjoy our talk very much.